I'm going to be talking about the information you need to know before using a beaker. A beaker is a piece of glassware used in a lab setting. Its purposes include measuring, heating, and stirring elements. Before using a beaker, ensure that you are aware of the chemicals that can be used within the particular beaker and ones that are not to be used. You can do so by reading the chemicals protocols and hazards prior to use. Also refer to the MSDS, the material safety data sheet, to ensure that the elements that you are mixing in the beaker are safe and will not cause danger to the environment around you. That information will also help you identify if your beaker can withstand the pressure that you need it to while mixing the substances you are using. The next step is to confirm that there are no cracks or contamination before beginning. If there is a crack in a beaker, it becomes dangerous. Broken beakers are to be immediately thrown out. While you are disposing broken beakers, place the pieces into a garbage bag while ensuring that you have gloves that will protect your hands from the sharp and dangerous substances. You always need to follow the basic steps and precautions taken before partaking in a lab which include thoroughly washing hands for 20 seconds or more with soap and water, tying back your hair, and wearing proper clothing which includes nothing flowy that can be a danger. Make sure that you are wearing the warranted PPE safety equipment such as safety goggles, gloves, lab jacket if needed, and closed toe shoes. If you're using a heat source and the beaker is hot, you need to further protect your hands by using heat resistant gloves and tongs if applicable. Before using a beaker, ensure that you have read the lab instructions prior to pouring, heating, and stirring the elements. Double check that the beaker is cleaned appropriately from prior users. If not, follow the cleaning steps that will be shown later in the video. While using a beaker, you must have full control over the element you are pouring or mixing and that you partake in the motion slowly to avoid dangerous spilling and splashing. While stirring the substances inside, you use a laboratory stirring rod in order to avoid contamination and possible danger by mixing random objects with the elements inside. Once you have a plan of action, place the beaker on a flat surface. The flat surface should be wiped down and should not be cluttered. The left side of this photo shows the correct way to have your surface and the right side shows the wrong way to have your surface with lots of objects near that could cause a hazard, whereas the left side has a clear space and a good environment. A beaker should be used in an open space and it should not be obstructed. In cases where elements contain toxic fumes, you will be notified and will use a fume hood. Beakers are imprecise and are used to estimate volumes and are not used when precise measurements are needed. The proper view of the level of liquid is at eye level to the markers on the side. When you are viewing the liquid, make sure you are mindful that the measurements on the side of the beaker are correct in respect to the instructions you are following. The markers are the lines that show the increments in milliliters that the liquid is at. When elements are poured into the beaker, they form a curve. The curve is known as a meniscus. The only way to read a beaker with a meniscus is to measure from the center of the curve regardless if it is concave, which is the undercurve, or convex, which is an overcurve. Cleaning laboratory glassware is very important due to the mix of chemicals. It also becomes dangerous and can cause inaccurate results in the lab if a beaker is not cleaned appropriately. Soaking beakers directly after finishing use is beneficial and strongly recommended to avoid having to deal with residue that is hard to remove that forms over extended periods of time. The cleaning process begins with scrubbing the solids off the sides of the beaker if applicable by using brushes, proper cleaning soaps, and detergents that are used for lab work. Ensure that your brushes are not overly worn out to avoid damage to the beaker walls. If the beaker needs to be cleaned further, you will need to soak it longer and use stronger cleaners to ensure that there is no substance left. Once the beaker is clean, no remnants of material inside, rinse it out and let it dry or dry it with a clean rag before next use. If something in the lab goes wrong, stay calm and look at your lab notes. Notify others on the problem and discuss the solution to the mistake. Remain calm and pause the lab to attend to the injury. If it is a broken glassware and you are cut, allow the wound to bleed and wash it with warm water and soap. Seek medical attention as soon as possible. Make sure the glass and elements spilled are immediately cleaned up. If there is a small contained fire, cover the container with a piece of ceramic, therefore cutting off the supply of oxygen to the fire, thus putting it out. Be careful to avoid spreading a fire by using an extinguisher. An alternative to a beaker is an Erlenmeyer flask. A single flask ranges between $300 to $100, which is similar to a beaker depending on the quality and volume of the liquid it holds. It is a type of chemistry flask. 
It has a cylindrically shaped neck and a flat bottom like a beaker. It also has measurement marks on the side, but it has a cone-shaped body. They are both used for the same purpose, and they are both around the same price and can be used interchangeably. An Erlenmeyer flask can be more beneficial and safe, as it has a thinner neck so the cone shape reduces the evaporation and helps prevent spills while mixing the liquid. A measuring alternative is a pipette. A single one ranges from 3 to $5. It is a small laboratory instrument used to measure and transfer small quantities of liquid in milliliters. Although small, it is accurate. A pipette may use a rubber bulb as a piece that sits on top and works as a vacuum source to suck the liquid into the instrument. You can also use a disposable transfer pipette, which is around $5 for a pack of 10, which sucks the liquid into the tube and can be transported to other mixing locations. Lastly, a graduated cylinder. A single one ranges from $6 to $20 depending on the quality and volume of liquid held. A graduated cylinder is a piece of equipment that is used to measure volume. It is more precise than a beaker due to the marked incremental graduates on the cylinder. The numbers on the side are more exact and grow by smaller amounts than a beaker making it easier to read.